It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I'm going to talk about something that lets you write really simply. So I do my show notes and I use Bookstack and it's an amazing product. I used to use Ghost and it was great but it got to where the Docker container I was using wasn't being able to be updated and I wanted to try out Bookstack again. I've really enjoyed using it. So you've got two really great options there that I've shown you how to set up in the past. If you're looking for more of a wiki, you've got XWiki, Wiki.js, just so many different ways that you can go. But sometimes you just want to open something up and start writing and then publish it. Now there's WordPress, it's been around for years, but it tries to be a little bit of everything and that makes me feel like it's a bit bloated. So I was looking for something really simple just to document some of my DIY projects. And I came across Write Freely and I thought, you know what, this looks really good. It's open source. They do have some different options for you to get this installed for testing versus production. And 100% they have instructions on how to install this straight up on your system instead of using Docker, because I know a lot of you guys are not fans of Docker, but I'm gonna go through the Docker setup that I did today and show you how I did it. Um, it's really great, it makes it very simple again for me to set this stuff up this way. So we're gonna go through setting up right freely. Now one of the things you wanna use sometimes when you're creating a blog is something like an image uh, server. So you've heard of Imgur or Imgur, I'm not sure how you spell it, or I mean, I'm not sure how you say it, I know how you spell it, but um, it's a really great place to upload images and then put those things into forums and discussion posts and things like that that don't allow you to upload photos. And Write Freely is kind of the same way. It doesn't let you upload photos, but it lets you link to the photos and then it shows the photo inside of your post that way. So I was thinking, well, that's great, but I, you know, Imgur is not something I control is something somebody else controls, which is of course the whole point is to find open source options. So I've got another pick out here um, called Pixar and it actually says, hey, I couldn't find anything that was like an Imgur kind of option. So he wanted to build something that was that. It's still under development, it's pretty early stages, but it does work really well. I've set it up and I really like it and I've, I've linked it together with my uh, with my other system here by, by using it for my images and stuff. And I'm going to show you this one next week, but today we're going to go through right freely. We're going to get it set up, make sure it's running, make sure you can have everything running the way that you want. And then next week you're going to see this one. And I'm going to show you a couple of things that will really make a difference. So you can go out and figure out how to set this up. But one of the things I found was there's some cores issues and you can solve that with Nginx Proxy Manager pretty easily. It's just a few lines that you have to put into the custom locations, but definitely something worth looking at, looking forward to as well for next week. So Let's get into the installation of Write Freely, and we're going to do it right after this. All right, before I get into the installation, really quickly, I just want to show you what Write Freely can look like. So this is kind of my personal DIY page. This is my first post. It's nothing that I've that I've set up, you know, to really go out and make a bunch of posts. But you can see I've got the images coming in from picture here. Um, I've got everything kind of working the way that I want. And this is just giving a, a myself kind of a blogging, uh, you know, history of a grand piano uh, refurb that I'm going to do. So this is one that I bought and it's, it's kind of just some pictures of it. And then we tore it all down. My wife, my brother-in-law and I uh, went through and tore everything out of it. And uh, I've got some more pictures that are coming. And it's really what my wife and I are now doing to clean off all this old paint and old black and everything like that and clean up the inside really well. And I'm going to take this and turn it into a digital piano. So I'm just giving a history of where I've come from on the digital piano side. But yeah, um, this is just something fun for me. It's my own little blog that I want to put out there and kind of keep track of. So that's why I'm showing you Write Freely. This is what Write Freely will look like when you're done. So we're going to go back over here. And you can see they've got a really great page here whenever it comes to installation. There's a whole bunch of information you can find and installation isn't hard. So um, they, they show you how to do it in different ways, but there's the install button right there. And that takes you over to their pages. It says, here's the, here's getting started, requirements, setup, everything like that. And they say running in production. So they give you a whole bunch of different information about how to do this and then how to set up your Nginx file, things like that. But we're gonna go a different route. We're gonna use a Docker compose file that I found out here. I'll have this linked in the show notes in the description, of course. And this person did a really great job of documenting how to run this thing. So I'm just gonna copy this because it's super easy. I'm gonna go here and hit copy. I'm gonna open up my uh, trusty terminal editor here and I'll enlarge that a little bit. And I'm gonna SSH over to my test server and we'll do this. And first we're gonna create a, a folder called Write Freely. So we're gonna do mkdir-p and then I'm gonna type in docker slash write freely. 
Now, the way that we that this works is from this home directory, I want to create a parent directory called Docker if I don't already have it. And then inside of that, I want to create a directory called write freely. Now, I already have a Docker folder. So what happens with this dash P is it says if this doesn't exist, create it. If it if it does, then use the one that's there. And then the same thing here it says, and if this one doesn't exist, create it. If it does, use the one that's there. So we kind of get everything in one command. We're just going to hit enter. We're going to cd into docker slash write freely. All right, we're going to cd into that folder. And we'll do an ls and there's nothing there. So we're going to do nano docker compose up dash d. <laughs> no, docker compose dot yml. I don't know what I'm thinking. There we go. We're going to paste in that text and we'll go through this file. Now there's one thing we need to add right here. So we're gonna to go to the top of the entry here and we're just gonna put in version colon three, uh, single quote, 3.3, .3, single quote, just like that. And then our services, we're gonna call that write freely. This is the image it's gonna use and it's gonna use the latest version. Container name will be write freely, the environment. So we have time zone, I'm in America, Chicago. So I'm gonna change that. And the PUID and PGID, I suggest leave this alone unless you know that they're different for some reason. And then this first port, leave it as 70 if, if unless you know otherwise that you need a different port. Uh, and then here, I'm gonna change 8080 because it's a very common port for different applications. So I'm gonna change it to 8250. So oh, let me make sure that's an eight, there we go. So it's 8250 is gonna be mapped from the host to the container 8080. So this is just a port mapping. It's kind of like a port forward that says, hey, on the host, listen on this port, and that's how I'll access the application. And when you hear something coming in for this application, forward it to the container on port 8080. Same thing here, 70 goes to 70. This is not a common port, so that's why I say we probably shouldn't have to change anything about it. And then down here, it says the volume. So th this is gonna set it into a place called slash mount. I don't want that. So I'm gonna take this back and I'm just going to make this dot slash write freely, which will be inside of this folder where I'm putting this Docker compose file. And that's going to map to the container side for slash mount slash config, which is fine. So we're going to save this with control O. We're going to press enter to confirm. Double check everything one more time. Make sure it all looks good here. I think it does. And then we're going to do control X to exit the nano editor. Now we're pretty much ready to run our Docker Compose file and get everything up and running. And then there's a few steps left that we need to do to get some, get a user created, a config created, some stuff like that. It's very basic, it's not super difficult, and I'll walk you through all of those steps. A few steps that we still need to do to get everything up and running. There's a config we need to create. We wanna create our admin user, and we're gonna do that right now. I wanna say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel, plus you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like, just click on that thumbs up and that way YouTube knows that you like it, and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. All right, in order to run this, we're just gonna write docker space compose up dash T, and then two ampersands, docker compose logs dash F. So what this says is, take my docker compose file, bring it up and bring it up as a daemon, which means it runs in the background. I don't have to do anything special to keep it running. After you finish that command, we say run this second command that says, when it's done running and everything's up and running, show me the log output so I can make sure it's running correctly. So we're just gonna press enter. It's gonna go out and download the images that it needs, which is great. It doesn't take very long. It's pretty small. There it is. It's done. It's already logging everything. And it's telling us right here that it's accepting requests on any port or any on any uh, IP address which is what we want so everything's up and running that's great we're gonna go over here and we'll just test our system real quick just to make sure it comes up so we're gonna type in our IP address of our server and 
There we go, there's our bright freely. That's very bright white, I apologize for that, but look at this, this is great, okay? So it gives you some, some real basic information, but we don't have anything to log in with yet, so we can't really start using it. So let's go fix that problem. And there's a couple things we need to do first. So we're gonna control C out of this. And we're gonna clear that out so you can see what I'm typing. And what we need to do is we need to go into the config the, let's see let's let's do an ls uh, let's go into the write freely folder here okay and we're going to go into the etc folder and you'll see right here we've got a couple of init files this write freely ini and write freely ini sample so what i want to do is i'm going to take this one and i'm going to copy it so let me see uh, write freely ini i'm going to make that config.ini and if I do NLS, you'll see now that I've got config.ini over here. I need to do one more step. I have to actually put this inside of another folder called write freely. It's kind of weird, but that's just how it is. So we're gonna do mkdir write freely. And then we're gonna move that config.ini into dot slash write freely, just like that. And then we're gonna go and edit that guy. So we'll CD into the write freely folder and we see our config.ini. So now we're gonna do nano config.ini. And he's got a lot of stuff already set for us. So the port is 8080, but that's because this is inside the container in reality. So don't change that. The bind IP address. Now this is set to 0.0.0.0. What this means is any other machine making the request to access this site should be allowed to do that. You could limit this to only a certain machine being allowed to access this, this site and that would work um, and that would limit it down. It's up to you, but I would say if you don't know for sure why you would want to do that or how you would want to do that, you'd probably want to leave this. The reason you might want to do that is that if you're using a proxy, you might want the proxy to be the only thing that can actually access it and, and then it can proxy it out to the world, which we do, but it's okay. This is fine for now, I think. So let's move down. There's a few other things here, nothing really special that we need to change, but we're going to keep going down. You'll see that there's this SQLite 3 database and it's going to show you where that's being stored. So this is by default using SQLite 3. If you wanted to use MariaDB, MySQL, Postgres, it supports that but you need to set up those containers and then give it this give this information for those containers, username, password, database, all that kind of stuff. So mine's gonna be such a small amount of data that for now I feel very comfortable using SQLite, it's fine. If you need more though, it, it is capable of doing that. So we've got this uh, site name here. Um, some of this stuff we can change inside of the actual UI, but I'll change it here as well. So this is just called blog site. So let's just call this my DIY test and the site is my test DIY okay like that and localhost 8080 is fine nothing there the theme is right you can go check out their documentation see what other themes they offer I'm just gonna leave it like this for now so you've got a few other things here. I don't think there's anything else that we need to change, but you can kind of scroll through and see all of the different options you have. So federation is set to true. If you don't want it federated, you can change this to false. Public stats, true. Monetization is set to false. This is something you can set up if you want to and allow people to help monetize what you're putting in there. It's really up to you. Notes only is false. So there's a lot of different things. Private is false. You can set this to be private instead of public and, and true. So it, it's very simple things, okay? Um, so we've got all of those settings. And then as you move down, if you're using OAuth of some kind, if you've got an OAuth provider, you can go and set that up right here. If you wanna use GitLab, if you wanna use GitT, if you wanna use some OAuth that's generic, you've got those options. Everything we need is done. So we're gonna do Control O to save our changes. Control X to exit. And we need to run one other command, but we need to do it really from inside the Docker container. So we're gonna do that here in just a second. But first, let's just CD a couple of times here and get back to our standard write freely. <laughs> this one, it's about three times you have to go back. So three layers, you gotta go back. We're gonna do a Docker compose restart. 
all this does is make sure that it grabs the latest configuration file and start using that so we didn't do anything special that's going to show up on the screen for us but just to make sure it gets those configs now we're going to do docker exec dash it which means execute an interactive terminal so inside of our container we're going to tell it the container name which is write freely and we want it to be slash bin slash bash so we want a bash terminal there we go it puts us in it I'll just clear this out so you can see what all I'm typing now we just need to go and take this command that he gives us that says hey here's how you create your first admin user if you try to do this before you set up that config.ini file it's gonna bark at you about hey you don't have a config yet so that's why we did that I'm gonna copy this I'm gonna go back in here and paste and I'm gonna backspace all of this password and username and I'm actually gonna create a username and password so this is gonna be Brian my password is gonna be PASS W0RD1 that's a terrible password you should make an actual long strong password for your main admin user this is just for our purposes and I will be destroying these after we're done so I'm gonna hit enter it didn't get mapped oh my goodness let's go see where it is so we created that file and I thought I created it in the right place oh I put a hyphen instead of just putting it as right freely completely by itself so I made a little mistake in creating our folders but that's fine we can go fix that let's go CD slash mount slash config slash etc if we do an LS here's where I messed up I called this with a hyphen so we just need to change it to not have the hyphen that's not a big deal we'll do MV write freely just like that and then we're gonna change that to write freely without the hyphen and it's done and now we can just do an up arrow to get back to our uh, setup where we're trying to create our user and you'll see that it's got everything there and we're just gonna hit uh, let's go back actually before we run this real quick let's do a CD just to make sure we're in the right place and CD slash I think that's where we need to be so now let's run our command to create our user there we go yes everything's done alright so it says loading the configuration file connecting to the SQLite 3 database creating the admin Brian so everything there's good I'm gonna exit out of the container itself and I'm gonna do the docker compose restart one more time since I know that I had that in the wrong place make sure it finds that configuration in the correct place there we go that's good alright so now let's go back to our browser and let's just refresh or actually go back to that IP address so that's 192.168.10.60 and then we're going to do colon 8250 and if you remember before I said we couldn't log in now we should be able to log in and this is going to be Brian and PASSW0RD1 and log in there we are we're logged in and it goes to this nice dark theme for your editing which is great uh, you can change this to be a dark theme later uh, just don't sweat it too much but now we're set up where we can actually do some things inside of the software but before we do let's set it up with an actual domain name and an SSL certificate so that we can access it from the outside of our of our network and let other people read our blogs if we want them to so I think that's kind of the next step Now we want to give this a, a domain name. We want to make sure it's got a good SSL certificate. So we're going to go and I use a, a reverse proxy called Nginx Proxy Manager. I've got videos on how to set it up and use it. I've got a script out there that will install Docker, Docker Compose, Nginx Proxy Manager, Portainer, all the things that you might want to run in order to get some of these other things going. So just be aware of that. Um, but this one's this one's really it's great. Um, yeah, 103 degrees. So it's a really great thing. But yeah, um, I'm going to open this up and it's gonna be white I apologize for that but we're gonna go here to my proxy host and we're gonna add a new proxy host so I'm gonna call this uh, we'll just call this YT for YouTube and we'll call it uh, right dot route me home dot org and I'm gonna hit tab so it creates a little chip now the thing you need to know is that I own the domain route me home dot org I have the ability to go in and set up an a record that points it to my public IP address so I've got a special record in there that says anything that goes to routemehome.org goes to my public IP address. 
And then when it gets to my to my firewall, I have a firewall rule that says anything that comes in as a request for a web page needs to come to the server that's running Nginx Proxy Manager. Nginx Proxy Manager then handles that request and says, where does this need to go? So I'm going to tell it where it needs to go. Remember, we've got this running right here on an IP and a port number. So we're just going to put in that IP address where it asks for it and that port number where it asks for it. So we're going to type that in, 192.168.10.60. And right here, we're going to put that port, which is 8250. And I'm going to tell it block common exploits, WebSocket support. And then I'm going to jump over to the SSL tab here. And I'm going to say, you know what? Request a new certificate, new SSL certificate, force SSL, HTTP2, HSTS, both of those. And we're going to come down here and click the I agree button. And then I've got my email address in here. So what this is going to do, when I click save, you'll see this little thing have a spinner. So that's going out and it's saying, hey, let's encrypt challenge the, the name that I just put on this other tab and if you find it and you're able to reach it give me a valid SSL certificate for that thing and if this just goes away like that it worked so we've got an SSL certificate for that site now so we called that YT let's go down here there it is if we click on it we can see our page remember and then here it is you can see it's HTTPS right here so we're nice and secure I can log in with that username that I created Brian and I can give it that password that wasn't a very good one. And if I don't type it in right, it won't let me log in. So that's nice to know that that functioned. Let's try again. There we go. Now, once I type it in correctly, it says, hey, you did a good job. And it asks me if I want to save things. So it comes right to this page where you can start writing your blog. And then you've got a few things here as far as setup. Now, I've got to say that the right freely navigation is a bit confusing for me sometimes because it changes as you go. So I'm going to enlarge this a little bit. Um, it changes as you go. So right here you can see that I'm set to the Brian space. I've got this other space called draft, which is where I really want to write things and save it until I'm ready to move it to the Brian space where the public can see it. Now you can view logs, you can view drafts, and then you can log out or blogs, drafts, and log out. Here you can change the font that you're using. It's kind of up to you. The serif font is fine by me. It tells you how many words are on the page. So far, none. And then this takes you to your kind of main page. Now there's some important stuff to note here. Here is Brian. I've got the admin dashboard. That's where we are now. We've got our account settings. We've got our import posts. So you can import posts that are in uh, Markdown. You can export from here and you can invite people to use your system or view it. Over here you've got going back to the blogs and then drafts so you can see all the blogs and drafts you've got and then the reader mode if you want to have somebody do something that's a reader mode that's great. So blogs nothing special here and again if we go to the admin dashboard you can see here's my dashboard here's my settings so I've got a few settings remember we changed this in the config file I told you it wouldn't really matter but we would change it so here you want to set this as my test DIY right and this is my test DIY journal okay so we're set there it tells you a little bit of information you can have multiple users you can set what your landing page will be if you want to so first I'd say create a page and then you can set it but this is the type of thing you want to set Open registrations. Do you want to allow people to register? Yes or no. If it's yes, check the box. If not, don't. Allow account deletion. So if you allow people to register, do you want to allow them to delete their accounts? Then I would say again. Um, allow invitations from all users. So if you're allowing people to register, can they invite other people to register? If you want them to, yes. If it's only admins, set that. If you don't want them to, hit none. Private instance. Is this private? Should it not be federated? Check the box. So this is all those things that we saw in that in that config folder or that config file, but it's here in the UI, so you can change those things. Minimum username length three. That's great. Hit save settings when you're done, and everything's gonna be saved. And you see now it says my test DIY. Here you can see users. You can see different pages. So they have a few pages already set up. You might want to go in and update these or change them at some point so that it's more personal to you. And then you've got a monitor of the system and it tells you it's been up seven minutes, 13 seconds. And you can see that this is version 0.13.2. And it tells you memory usage, eight megabytes. I mean, this is very small. It uses almost nothing. So it's really cool. All right, so 
if we go back to here and then we go back to here we can get back to this blogs page that says new post customize stats view blog so I'm gonna turn this off that I have the dark reader I'm gonna hit that little check this is what it's gonna look like if you don't have dark reader set you can customize this so you can change that so that at least on the reading pages it's not a bright white background um, I recommend you do that if you don't like the bright white background. You can also change, instead of it saying Brian, you can change what it says. You can give it a description, all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it's not going to say Brian, but it'll say your name. You can do that. Um, the publicity, is it unlisted, private? Is it public? You can set that. Display format, is it a blog? Is it a novel? Or is it a notebook? Up to you. Text rendering, how do you want that done? And then they've got this custom CSS section. So there's this really nice CSS page out here. Let me see if I have it open. I do. So I will have this linked in the show notes as well. Oh no, this is the page for them to run their stuff. I'm sorry, I don't. Let me go look for it real quick. Um, it's really easy to find, but I'll have it linked in the show notes as well. But we'll put in uh, dark mode CSS right freely. And we usually get this right here. So it's on this GitHub page. So again, I'll, I'll make sure that this is linked in the show notes. But this person went to the trouble to make a nice dark mode for us. So we'll just copy all of that. We're going to copy it. And we're going to go back to our Write Freely page here. And we're going to paste it in. And then we're just going to go down here. We're going to hit Save. And now if people come to our blog pages... Uh, you'll see it's nice and dark when we're on edit, but if we come over here and we go into the actual blogs, drafts, I don't have anything to read, but in the reading mode where it's published, it's, it'll, be, it'll have that dark view. Um, but if you don't like this white, which is killing me by the way, I apologize for this, but I'm going to change this back so that dark reader can handle it for you and let you see things that, that should be kind of in a dark mode, which is really nice. So we've got the blogs, you've got the drafts. And if you want to start writing a draft, just go here, start writing a draft. It's really great. Make sure you set it to what you want it to be for. So I'm going to set draft. Then you can start writing something. And then this just uses normal markdown. So I'll put a title. This is my awesome DIY title. Okay. You can put some text. So lorem ipsum lorsit. Uh, met. I don't know whoever came up with this freaking lorem ipsum thing, but regular text. And then we can do a couple of things for a second title, secondary title. And you can do uh, asterisk. This is my italics text. And you can do two asterisks. And this is my bold text. So you really know it's important. Okay, important, nope, there we go. So if I just publish that, you'll see that it comes up and it actually resizes things. So I've got my title, regular text, here's this, there's my italics, and here's my bold right here. So it just uses regular markdown. They've got a little key on their site that helps you understand what the markdown should look like. But this is currently in my drafts. So if I go back to drafts, You'll see that I've got this thing here. I can jump into it anytime. I can edit it, I can delete it, or I can move it to Brian, which is gonna be the public facing side where people can see it. So if I say move to Brian, it'll say moved to Brian. So if I go over here to blogs, I should be able to click into Brian and you'll see here's my blog. Now I wanna give this a better title, but you can see here's everything that I just did. And I've got the option to edit it, pin it, delete it, change it to a draft. Same as you had over there, except now this should be viewable by the public. So this is Write Freely. It's really an awesome project. I think it's nice. It's simple. It's clean. The, the navigation is a little bit tricky at first, but once you kind of get used to where things are at, it's not that bad. But yeah, um, really clean, very easy, makes it easy to write. So as you can see, I have this one over here where I'm already kind of documenting my, my DIY project for making a digital grand piano, something I've wanted to have forever. And I've got a lot of stuff here. This is just for me. I don't think most people would care about this history of what I've done, but it's out here. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited about getting this started and kind of going through it and showing people the process because I think that's going to be really awesome. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us. 
and I'll talk to you next time. It's your open source advocate and I'm back and I've set up a store with a little bit of merchandise. I love being your open source advocate, but I want you guys to be the open source advocates with me. So if you want to get out there and get some of this stuff. And if you do, let me know what you think of it. Thank you for subscribing.